Focus on Africa on the BBC World Service. I'm Paul Batchwinger. To Kenya now, where legal team acting for the leader of the Nigerian separatist movement, the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Namdi Kanu, have filed a constitutional petition at the High Court in Nairobi. They want the Kenyan government held accountable for extraditing Mr. Kanu to Nigeria. The Kenyan government has denied involvement. The jailed IPOB leader is facing treason charges. Professor George Wajakoya is the lead lawyer. He told me more. We filed a petition today against the Kenyan government and various actors in this case for the unconstitutional and unlawful removal, which denied our clients, which was engineered by the respondents through abduction, denial of fair administrative action, and in violation of human rights of Namdi Khan. Do you have evidence? Yes, we do. How long does the Kenyan government have to respond? We are filed in court, we are serving the, the other respondents, and then from there we take on. It's not an issue of the Kenyan government responding, it's, it's a judicial matter in court. Indeed, but there are a number of days within which the government needs to respond or can respond. Normally the court has set standards, and since you have gone to a constitutional court, once we file and we serve, then the court will give us a date, which will be within a very short time, because it's under the certificate of agency. A certificate of agency meaning? For the matter to be heard as soon as possible. Oh, I get you. The Kenyan government has denied extraditing Namdi Khan to Nigeria. Have you got evidence about it? Yes, we do. We have copies of his British passport. We have a stamp that indeed this gentleman was in Kenya. We also have evidence of his residence and apartment. We also have evidence that he was actually in a Nairobi hospital on a particular day, treated by a doctor that will have his name. We also have evidence that on the material day, he went to the airport to meet a friend, and that's when he was arrested. So you're arguing he was basically kidnapped? Definitely he was kidnapped, yes. Kano is a British national. Why are you not filing the case in the United Kingdom? First of all, that's a very good question. And that's why we are also wondering why the Kenyan government, based on the evidence that we have of his British passport, based also in the inquiries that we have made, that he renounced his Nigerian citizenship, why on earth would the Kenyan government deport a British subject to Nigerian territory? That's what you want them to tell us. Does Kenya have an extradition treaty with Nigeria? They are members of our international extradition convention, yes, they, which is Nigeria and Kenya signatory. So technically they could extradite him if there was a genuine reason? Definitely, yes, but then extradition and rendition are two things. The extradition has to follow due process. You can't just pick up somebody and throw him a plane, that is barbaric and is forbidden, is outlawed by international law, even by our own constitution. Now, Mr. Kano is already in Nigeria and facing charges of criminal conspiracy, intimidation, and membership of an illegal organization. Will this development affect his case, if at all? If they're trying a Nigerian national, suddenly, but if they're trying a British national, not at all. That's an abuse of due process for a Nigerian court to try a British citizen who has no connection with Nigeria. Now, are you acting on behalf of uh, Mr. Namdi Kanu, or is it just your own volition? I've been given instructions by his family in London and his brother in Germany, of which you have affidavits here. Are they in touch with him? How is he? We didn't want to go to that direction because there are other lawyers in Nigeria who could answer that question best. So how long do you think uh, this matter might be resolved? It's up to the courts to put up the dates and it's up to the respondents to respond to what we have petitioned the court for. So that is an entirely a process that is within the judiciary and we have no control over it. Professor George Wajakoya speaking from Karen near Nairobi.